so I'm hoping this makes the video better. Typically on these videos, I have everything mounted right here and the cab is good and sturdy, but this mount that I had doesn't um, take up any of the high frequency vibration that's generated off this window. That's why anytime I open and shut the door, you see the window move. And so I'm trying a little bit, something a little different. I have my body mount on um, and that should alleviate a lot of the high frequency vibration. But today's project at hand, we've started a field back here. Right now it's close to, I'd say 120 foot or so wide by five or 600 foot long here. And I'm hoping to get this cleared up. We're either gonna grow sweet corn here next year or we're going to um, use this for alfalfa hay, um, you know, depending on what the soil is. So right now, um, to save time and it's worked out pretty good because what I usually do is I will go through with the blade and put it down for these stumps that are real low that you can't hardly see and it'll catch them and then I dig up the stumps and go ahead and stack all the brush and everything but I've changed it up as you can see there's this field's full of stumps and um, what I'm doing is, as I make a pass, I'm just throwing everything to the side that I'm pulling out of the next passing uh, that I'm making. And what I'll do at the end is I'll push everything up into a windrow and burn it then. Um, that has saved a tremendous amount of time so far. <clears throat> and this is the first field I'm trying it on. Here at the farm I have I would say close to 70 acres that will eventually be cleared um, into pasture ground or hay fields. And see, my blade just now kicked up. There's a pine stump here. Um, these I've got a little left the two foot bucket on just for trying it out. The one foot bucket does make it seem like it's easier digging. But I wanted to try and see how the two foot bucket did. I, I started out with it. It's a lot better for raking brush. But um, I'm thinking when I go to curl the bucket, when I'm popping these stumps out, that the bucket gives me more support and don't sink up some more of the force is exerted on the stump. So we'll give it a try and see how it goes today and if it don't go well we'll switch back to the one foot bucket that way i'm not moving nowhere near as much dirt but as wet as the ground is right now that one foot bucket as i curl just wants to push itself uh, into the dirt instead of exerting the force on the stump so i'm hoping this wider bucket will give me more surface area to push against and that force will then be uh, put into the stump instead of just the ground and compacting it. More than likely this is pretty boring stuff but I'm taking and videoing everything as I go along uh, as far as getting this farm started from scratch from the forest to uh, pretty ground but more than likely I'll speed the video up so you're not bored to death most of these stumps are taking the you know stump stumps take one pull and they're out and then stumps like this one here uh, this is a big pine stump uh, may take upwards of five minutes I think the longest stump I've had has been a big oak and it took me about 12 minutes because typically when I speed the videos up, um, the video sped up at four eight X speed. And this one's wanting to come, it's just got a bunch of roots going all over the place. When I see the ground lifting up where those roots are, I try to break that root and try not to throw a window at the cab and break the window. There's a big root.
anything that y'all would like to see, let me know. I'll do my best to film as we go along. We try, I try to film everything that I do, um, but sometimes time is not on my side and I don't get to capture everything um, the way I would like to. But what I'm thinking about doing is just setting the GoPro up and letting it run every time I do any project. And um, not all the videos may have me talking in them, um, just for the fact I need to focus on what I'm doing at the time. Because in the end, this is a farm that we're trying to get into production and generating its own income. YouTube things kind of just a thing for me to do. Uh, I'm very shy and do not like talking in front of a camera. I know a lot of times I'm monotone. Um, well, I'm not shy, but in front of the camera I am. And uh, I'm using this YouTube video one to kind of uh, help with that personal issue I have there. This stump is, there's a good snake. This stump's not wanting to come out. I think this is a big maple stump. I thought it was a pine to start with. That's why it's fighting so much. They have a very wide, wide, or very uh, shallow, wide uh, root system to them, and the roots are very stringy. And I'm telling you now, looking at the roots, this is definitely a the maple stump, that's why it's fighting so hard. But after this stump, I'll probably just speed the video up so you're not bored to death. But you can come along and see me clear some land. That's a monster stump. That's close to the size of the machine. The stump itself is not that big, but the root system is. A lot of this I'm working through here. You'll see big drop-offs in front of me. This is um, one of the skitter trails that they used to pull the timber out with, so there's some significant ruts. So as I'm going along, I'm doing my best to fill those ruts in, but we'll come back with our 16-foot disc and disc all this and level it. But it don't hurt doing a little leveling as we go here with the machine. considering having the timber cut on your land um, it, if you're wanting to put it into farmland it works fine and dandy and that's what we're doing here but if you're not putting in, in well I guess what I'm getting at is pick your logger wisely um, like this here is a whole tree that they just left behind that could have been pulled wood um, some loggers do really good, some leave a mess and give a bad name to the other ones. This logger here that I'm clearing up after on this section of the property, um, he did a very good job. Not so much the first logger we had in here. That's why we, um, when we did it, we did in sections because you're contracted with them to do X amount of ground and I didn't want to be tied in with someone that we wasn't happy with so after the first logger finished the first 30 acres or so um, we ended up going another direction with another logger um, to do the back 50 acres or so here. And if you'll notice as I'm making all these videos, I am pretty bad about going all over the place doing different projects, but I've got so many things running through my head that I'm trying to prepare for this next season. Um, I probably should settle down and do projects to their 
finish, but as far as this, and I'm mainly speaking on this clearing here, um, I've been kind of jumping around the farm in different spots as I cleared. Kind of like here, I, it's been a little piece since I've been back here clearing. And my original game plan was to clear where I started at over towards these woods. And I've already started the wrong direction this morning, so I'll go ahead and walk the machine back here to where I need to be clearing versus where I was. I get as I'm traveling with the machine like every every bit of every pass count or every bit of the machine time count as I can I'll usually either be leveling ground or moving a piece of brush that I've missed and I try to keep it rolling good and see like this stuff here I'm a pretty small one but uh blade just about pushed that one out. This was a pine thicket where we're at right now when we bought the property so a lot of this clearing has been really nice to do. It's one of the reasons I decided to clear up this field to start with was I knew that the clearing should be uh, a little easier than where all the hardwoods was. The majority of our property was hardwoods. We had several pine groves in here and this is one of them. I think there's about 12 acres here, 10 to 12 acres that I'll be clearing up in this one particular field to start. That was all um, pine trees. And of course there's a scattered oak and maple here and there in this ground but um, pretty much I'd say 90% of it was uh, softwood pine.
kind of in a bad position on this stuff. Right there, reached up beside me, plopped it right out. 
and if I get extra dirt, I usually just throw it in a low spot, and it'll all be co-mingled and leveled out when we come back with that disc. Sounds better in this video. We've had a little, I've changed up on the, uh, or as far as using a mic. And if this don't work, I will go with one of the wireless mics. Some of it's twos. I talk pretty low, and that, you know, that's part of the issue. Get a little bit of this cleared up before that rain gets here and everything gets muddy. Um, and we'll probably do some brush pile burning since we've got this rain coming in. Another dang maple stump. These maples grow a lot like grass. You'll have one big tree, and since it's roots are shallow and real wide those roots will go out and just sprout another tree up kind of like a strawberry does and so you'll have big clumps of these maples all in one area and you'll fight them tooth and nail but generally they're fairly easy to get out of the ground um, I'm digging behind me right now so I don't have my blade pushing down to help me or something dark on the stone. Because it's wanting to come out. Hey, what I'll do is I'll finish this pass off. And I'll pull that one right out as I come back up.
that being said, we've got a couple patches open up in here. This is going to be some pretty easy ground to open up. So I will come back with a one foot bucket to stump this and clear the strip down through here. But until next video, thank you for watching.